Linux is awesome. The more I use it, the more I love it. And heck, even if I just want to relax, watch some YouTube videos or do a bit of gaming, I can do so. But as it is common with using an open source operating system with the Linux kernel, there are some things worth mentioning if you want to use Linux as your daily driver as well. Let's talk about it right after you hit that like and subscribe button. Also don't forget to check the little bell. Alright, let's go. To be honest, I don't really know what's happening anymore. The first time I actually installed a Linux desktop two and a half years ago, it was fine, at the most. Package formats like Flatpak, Snap or the individual ones of each distribution did exist. However, they often lack developer support. Personally, I find it extremely important that the actual developer is distributing the package. Yes, most open source licenses allow for the redistribution of the code and applications. But you have to rely on someone else. These individuals need to constantly update the packages, but you also need to trust them. No one can really guarantee that there isn't malicious code hidden away somewhere in the redistributed software and repo checks can only do as much. There are just too many packages and applications nowadays. Also, there were often no good graphical software centers. And yeah, of course I don't mind using the terminal. Since not only do I like using it, I also know how to use it due to my study program. But that being said though, the terminal is not made for people who don't know what they are doing. Most newcomers assume that the root user is comparable to the administrator on Windows. But it's not that simple. The approaches of Linux and Windows are completely different. Typically on Linux it is assumed that the user knows what they are doing. This is why the terminal, especially on older distributions or applications, often doesn't even report if a command succeeded or not. On Windows, however, it is assumed that a user doesn't know what they're doing. And it is exactly the reason why there are so many prompts on if you really want to do this, if you want to do that, and so on. So the assumption that you can use root as an administrator all of the time is kind of wrong, but also dangerous because root can do everything. And that also includes deleting, well I don't know, maybe some very important files. Yeah, you can do some damage on Windows as well, but there are usually some ways to restore the data. On Linux, it's bye bye. But that being said, Linux on the desktop market in 2022 is nowhere near that experience anymore. At least if you go with those that advertise themselves as being a desktop operating system. Don't bother with ultra stable distributions like Debian 11. If you want to install a server, then go for it. But for typical desktop usage, it's more of a hassle if you don't know what you're doing. Which is most people. We have some really nice looking desktop environments, a wide selection of applications as well as decent gaming performance. And it's just getting better. We're finally reaching a point where a new user only needs to know two things. How to boot from a USB stick and how to change the boot order. Installation wizards like Anaconda, the one from Fedora, make the installation process really easy once started. And yes, before you start commenting, Anaconda is nowhere near the best installer. And many people actually hate it for its horrible partitioning functionality. But that being said, most users don't really need to partition their drive manually, so I consider this an advanced feature and otherwise I didn't experience any hiccups whatsoever. Let me know in the comments which installers you prefer, so I can take a look at those. So yeah, installing and using Linux has become quite easy nowadays, but what are the missing things? What is the purpose of this video? Before we get into the missing things, here's a quick disclaimer. This video is mostly targeted at newcomers, but also developers who might want some vocal telemetry. Be also aware that my statements are subjective and you might have a different view on this. Everyone is entitled to have an opinion. Alright, let's talk about it. You know what the biggest issue with desktop Linux is? What Linux is really missing? Users. No, really. The lack of users is the one and only thing that slows down development. A lot of people do use Linux, but on a global scale it's a really small portion. Why is that so important and why should it slow down development? It's quite simple actually. Users generate data. And I'm not necessarily talking about telemetry data, but like 
overall questions, rants and overall feedback. Users break stuff. I never ever had to contact Microsoft for help when I was on Windows. And yet a lot of people do. Developers need feedback from a large user base. Be it positive, be it negative. It pushes development forward, but can also help to prioritize certain features. And with a great user base comes proper driver support. Be it proprietary or not. For now, Linux needs drivers, or at least some participation from the hardware vendors. Heck, maybe they open source some of their tools anyway, once Linux becomes more popular. The absence of a good NVIDIA driver, the lack of control tools for mice, keyboards, as well as external tools like capture cards, can be frustrating for some who do need them. And I don't think that the right answer is to sell your old gear and buy a new one. Simply because different hardware can get expensive really really fast. I even made a whole video about this, so make sure to check it out. But that being said, the actual experience is not as bad as I make it out to be. My hardware, even though I use an old Nvidia GPU, is working fine. My mouse has an onboard storage for its settings, and even my audio interface works the way I expected it to. But the thing is that once I want to change my mouse DPI, things get a bit more tricky. Yes, there are really awesome tools like Solar or Piper, which essentially do adjust the same things that Logitech G-Hub would. But the thing is, it is not always crystal clear if those settings are now local or written to the onboard storage. If I plug it into a different computer, will it remember my settings or not? This is exactly the reason why we need support of these companies. A mouse configuration tool like G-Hub could also easily be open sourced. There are no features in there that I would consider a secret. Nvidia, however, is a different example. I understand why they want to keep their technologies like DLSS, Reflex and stuff like that proprietary. I get it. It gives them an advantage on the market. What I don't understand is why they don't open source the rest of their firmware. What is so special about certain features that AMD also provides? Well, none? It, it's stupid, I know. Proprietary features are not that bad, but if it limits basic functionality, then it's a real problem and needs to be fixed. We want proper Linux support, we need the numbers. But how do we get there? Many Linux users who want to advertise it to newcomers talk about privacy and the advantages of open source. But really, end users don't really care for that. Yes, everyone gasps when there is a data leak but then again proceed to accept everything thrown at them. It's quite funny actually. So privacy is not really that much of a selling point. What end users care about are results. For gamers, that would be better performance, lower latencies, less hassles. For designers and content creators, it would be proper tools to work with. For offices or just browsing the web users, it would be an office suite that does not feel complicated or simply a web browser. And I think this is the point where we need to start advertising it. Privacy, less telemetry and all of those things are a bonus, but are not the main selling point anymore. So here's my approach. I'm using Fedora 36 and I find it awesome. I use it for everything and I will continue to increase my skills in content creation. I'm going to look into more open source applications and I will try to keep increasing my gaming skills in competitive games, but also do some optimizations for higher FPS. So that if anyone asks what settings I'm using, I can answer that I'm on a different operating system. And if they want the same experience as I do, they can install it as well. We'll get there. We just need to advertise Linux in a different way. Benchmarks for new games would be a great example. But hey, what do I know, right? Let's keep making content and see where the road takes us. If you've liked this video, then make sure to show it with a like and heck, even a sub. And I also think that this video might be interesting for you. Just say. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.